Ledger and his sister had a phone call in 2008, and what they said foreshadowed his tragic fate. Heath Ledger tragically passed away from an accidental overdose on January 22, 2008. Less than six months later, The Dark Knight was released in theaters worldwide, and the movie star was immortalized as Batman's arch-nemesis, Joker. Intriguingly, it would later be revealed that the actor had uttered some haunting words during his last phone call with his sister, Kate. In the years preceding his untimely death, Heath's career had hit incredible heights. In 2005, he played Ennis Delmar in Brokeback Mountain, a landmark movie in regard to gay representation in cinema. Both Heath and his co-star Jake Gyllenhaal were highly acclaimed for their performances. Fittingly, both men landed Academy Award nominations, Best Actor and Best Supporting Actor, respectively. The Antipodean actor then moved on to the biggest role of his career in terms of mainstream recognition. Ledger was chosen by director Christopher Nolan to play Joker in The Dark Knight, the sequel to 2005's dark franchise reboot, Batman Begins. The actor wasn't the obvious choice to play the crown prince of crime, and there was some pushback from fans at first. The reaction seems silly nowadays, given how electrifying his performance would turn out to be. It quickly became clear to fans that Ledger was the right man for the job when the first trailer hit and he gave interviews in which he discussed his take on the character. On that note, he spoke to newspaper The New York Times in November 2007 about the role. Ledger also spoke to Empire Magazine about his interpretation of the iconic comic book villain. I definitely feared it, he said, admitting to some reservations about taking on a part that had been previously played by Jack Nicholson in Tim Burton's 1989 Batman film. Although anything that makes me afraid, I guess, excites me at the same time. He went on to say, I don't know if I was fearless, but I certainly had to put on a brave face and believe that I have something up my sleeve, something different. Setting his vision of the character apart from previous ones was certainly something into which Ledger put incredible effort. First he did his research, and then he thought about the character deeply. The Aussie actor's interpretation was much more vicious and nihilistic than that of Nicholson's killer clown. I ended up landing more in the realm of a psychopath, Ledger said, someone with very little to no conscience towards his acts. It helped that director Nolan gave Heath free reign with the character, which the star appreciated. In the interview with Empire, Ledger spoke further about his take on Joker. He said, There are no real boundaries to what the Joker would say or do. Nothing intimidates him, and everything is a big joke. Actor and director were very much on the same page regarding the character. Nolan said they talked a lot about Alex in A Clockwork Orange and how they wanted the Joker to be the guy who would actually frighten an audience. Gary Grinnell, Ledger's dialect coach in the movie and a close friend, lived with him during the shooting of the movie. He told People Magazine that the star was exhausted emotionally and physically. He said he'd wake up in the middle of the night hearing the actor wandering around the apartment, restless and unwell. Grinnell said that Ledger knew things were spiraling out of control for him, but he couldn't stop himself taking the cocktail of drugs. He said, I gotta stop, it's not helping. I'm not well, it's making me more upset, revealed Grinnell. It wasn't helping with the relationship issues, it wasn't helping with missing his kid, it wasn't helping his sleeping, and he knew that. Wollison finally called 911 shortly before 3.30 p.m. They told her to perform CPR on Ledger, but again, he was unresponsive. Paramedics then arrived simultaneously with the security agency that Olsen had called roughly seven minutes after the 911 call was placed. Heath's official cause of death was subsequently determined by the New York Chief Medical Examiner's Office. Kim said Ledger had been agitated, saying he was busy. He was meeting Steven Spielberg the next morning. He really needed to be bright and shiny. He was also suffering from a chest cold or a chest infection at the time, and this was preventing him from sleeping. The actor told his sisters that he was going to take some sleeping pills. Kim continued, So Kate was saying to him, Well, Heath, you can't take, you know, sleeping tablets on top of prescription medication. You know, it's not a good mixture. This prompted Ledger to play down her warning. Kim recounted, 
he sort of said, Katie, Katie, look, I'll be fine. You know, I just need to get some sleep. Can't blame anyone else in that situation, Kim said. That's hard to accept because I loved him so much and was so proud of him. He then referred again to Kate's phone call with Ledger in which she told him not to take the prescription medications with the sleeping aids. He said, Katie, Katie, I'm fine. I know what I'm doing. He would have had no idea. They were doing night shots in the freezing cold, and he had a weak chest anyway, said Kim. He'd caught this cough and just couldn't shake it. But he thought he had to because he wanted to get the movie done. The father also believed that his son's fame made it easier for him to obtain the drugs his body was craving. Keith posthumously won the Best Supporting Actor Academy Award in 2009 for his performance as Joker. His family attended the ceremony and accepted the statuette on his behalf. After discussing with the Academy, it was ruled that the Oscar should belong to his next of kin, daughter Matilda. Until she turns 18, her mother, Michelle Williams, will keep the trophy. Speaking at the Tribeca Film Festival premiere of the documentary I Am Heath Ledger in 2017, Kate let her feelings be known. She said, honestly, it was the complete opposite. He had an amazing sense of humor, and I guess only his close friends and family knew that. But he was having fun. He wasn't depressed about the Joker. Val confirms that the rumors had simply left her confused. It was coming out that he was depressed, and it was taking a toll, and we were going, what? Kate summed it up best when she talked about her brother's exhilarating and terrifying rendition of the villain. She said, I was really shocked because that was him having fun. The world is filled with stories going viral every single day. But how many of these sites can you actually follow? We understand that your day should start with positive stories, stories that resonate with you. And so we started JoJo Stories. Our mission is to create meaningful stories that cover everything from animals to anthropology history to environment and lifestyle. The kind of content you read on our site will be one you'll want to share with your family and friends. We hope you'll join our growing family and be part of our community. Welcome to JoJo Stories. JoJoStories.com